Hey guys, how's it going? TJ here with Dead History, and today is our next presidential series installment. And today we're taking a look at the 20th president of the United States. Yeah, the guy behind me, James Garfield, one of my favorite presidents of all time. I'm flying solo again this week, Henry's not with me, but what I need you to do before we take a look at James Garfield is hit subscribe down below, give us a like and a thumbs up, and leave those comments and questions. We love those, as we always tell you, comments, questions, always welcomed. And of course, hit that little notification bell so you can be notified when we do a video, and in the words of Henry, that's every single week. So now sit back, relax, because we're going to start to take a look at the 20th President of the United States, James Garfield. And this is Dead History. Hey guys, TJ back with you. And of course, behind me, good old Garfield. Wait. No, not that Garfield. Not the fat orange cat. This guy, the 20th president of the United States, James Garfield. Like I said, one of my favorite presidents of all time. And I have some really cool things to tell you about James Garfield. As most of you already know, I'm sure, he was only the second president ever in the history of our country to be assassinated while in office. Yep, he was assassinated and he died a few months later. Yeah, a few months later. We're going to tell you all about that and all about his assassination and death in a little while. Also, James Garfield was really born into poverty. I'm talking like real poverty. Born in a log cabin, we're gonna get into all that as well. And James Garfield, one of the reasons he's one of my favorite presidents of all time, he may have been the most intelligent, brilliant president we've ever had. I mean, this man really, really, really was intelligent. I mean, just a brilliant man. We're going to get into all that. I'm going to tell you all these amazing fun facts about Garfield. Not the cat, the president. <laughs> so sit back and relax and enjoy. As Henry would tell you, grab the potato chips, grab the popcorn, do whatever you're going to do. And now enjoy the 20th president of the United States, our next presidential series installment, looking at James Garfield. Enjoy. Hey guys, how's it going? TJ here with Dead History, and welcome to our next presidential series installment, looking at the 20th president of the United States, James Garfield. And of course, I'm flying solo this week, so Henry's not with me. What I'm going to do is I'm going to jump right in here and get into the uh, birthplace and the childhood and kind of the uh, young adult life uh, and early political career and that sort of thing of James Garfield. So starting out, James Abram Garfield, he was actually the last U.S. president that was born in a log cabin. Uh, he began his life on November 19th of 1831 in Orange Township, Ohio. And uh, what you're seeing on your screen here, these are some pictures of the James Garfield birthplace in uh, Moreland Hills, Ohio is the actual town now. Uh, these are not my pictures. I did not visit here. Uh, these are all stock photos that I found online. Uh, but this is the actual birthplace. And you'll even see on your screen there's an actual uh, replica of the cabin in which James Garfield was born in. So, And there's also a statue of James Garfield located there at the birth site. A um, bunch of different things. And like I said, that's in Moreland Hills, Ohio. I did not visit there, but these are the pictures of his birthplace and, of course, you see some other pictures of, you know, old drawings and that sort of things and sketches of his birthplace. So there's that. James Garfield's father, he actually died when James was an infant. And he was primarily raised by his very, very poverty-stricken mother, Eliza. Uh, he definitely was born into poverty. We'll get into that in a second. Uh, James Garfield was a voracious reader. And he was inspired by the publication, The Pirate's Own Book, to work as a laborer on a ship. He left home at age 16 and was employed upon a canal boat, but he returned home six weeks later after he fell overboard and contracted malaria. 
Eliza Garfield, his mother, she had hoped her son would follow more scholarly pursuits and gifted him her entire life savings, which was $17. And that covered one term's tuition at the Western Reserve Eclectic Institute. Uh, to pay for the remainder of his education, young, uh, the young man, James Garfield, performed carpentry and janitorial duties for the school. He was adept enough at mathematics, literature, and ancient languages that he became a professor in those subjects. So kind of touching back to what I had just said uh, a minute or two ago, he was the last president to be born in a log cabin. Uh, his father died when he, James was only about 18 months old, about two years old, almost. Um, him and his siblings, they tried to work with their mother at their farm to make ends meet. Um, and yeah, so I mean, he was really, really born into poverty. Talk about, um, you know, a lot of, we have a lot of presidents that were born into poverty. Uh, Abraham Lincoln, of course, was born into poverty, log cabin, that sort of thing. But, uh, Garfield... Definitely, his family was definitely, definitely in poverty. Uh, not not well off at all. Um, very poverty stricken. So, uh, pretty interesting stuff. And as I just touched on, he originally wanted to sail the open seas, James Garfield. As a child, Garfield was enamored with adventure novels and imagined a career as a sailor. Nautical novels did it, he once said. My mother tried to turn my attention in other directions, but the books were considered bad and from that very fact were fascinating. As a teenager, he got a job towing barges, but that was about as far as his seafaring would get. Uh, he did attend the Western Reserve Eclectic Institute, which is now called Hiram College in Hiram, Ohio, and Williams College in Massachusetts before settling in as a Greek and Latin teacher at Hiram, where he would later become president. Um, so very interesting stuff about Garfield and his early life and him wanting to be a sailor and all this this kind of stuff. Pretty pretty interesting stuff. Pretty cool. Uh, James Garfield, uh, actually, he was also a preacher. Uh, he's actually the only president to ever have been a preacher. Uh, he was a minister of the Christian Church Disciples of Christ. Uh, so pretty interesting stuff. I actually didn't know that until I was researching Garfield a little more. Uh, another interesting fact about Garfield, uh, James Garfield liked triangles. Uh, a book was published in 1940 containing 370 proofs of the Pythagorean theorem. <clears throat> One of these came from Garfield, who discovered a unique proof of the theorem using a trapezoid. So, uh... uh as I've already kind of touched on, but I'll touch on even further, he was an extremely intelligent man, uh, and he had a fascination with triangles and, and kind of proved a uh, theorem uh, with trapezoid, which really cool. Uh, Garfield also, he juggled Indian clubs. To stay in shape and build muscles, James Garfield liked to juggle Indian clubs. It was a popular exercise device during the late 19th and early 20th century. The clubs were shaped like bowling pins and were swung in patterns as part of an exercise routine. So, uh, pretty interesting stuff there. Um, Garfield, he was a fascinating guy. Uh, I think I've said it in my opening video that he's one of my favorite presidents of all time. He, he just really was a fascinating guy. So, as I said, he grew up very poor. His dad died when he was very young. His mom raised him. Uh, he tried his hand at a seafaring life, you know, out on the sea, but that didn't work out. Then his mom gave uh, him her life savings, as I said, and he was off to colleges. Uh, and like I said, he actually learned uh, Greek and Latin, started to be a professor and teach uh, those classes at college. Uh, and it was in his capacity as an instructor that he met a shy student, Lucretia Rudolph, whom he wed in November of 1858, following a prolonged engagement. Uh, during their courtship, James Garfield left Ohio and completed his studies at Williams College in Massachusetts. So yes, to answer anybody's question that's kind of wondering, he did marry his student. <laughs> he, uh, he moved to the Eclectic Institute, which is again today Hiram College, 
Well, he taught some classes to help pay his way through school. One of his students was Lucretia Rudolph. They dated, started dating in 1853. They married five years later, as I said. Uh, she later would uh, later be a reluctant first lady. And for the sh- uh, short time that she occupied the White House, um, she, you know, wasn't overly thrilled, I guess, about uh, his, the, the presidency and the, the politics and that sort of thing. So a little interesting fact there. But um, they met when he she was a student of his in college. And, uh, yeah, pretty interesting stuff. That's, that's kind of a cool little fact. Uh, he actually, James Garfield, became the president of a college at the age of only 26. Uh, Garfield decided to continue teaching at the Eclectic Institute after graduating from Williams College in Massachusetts. And in 1857, he became its president. While serving in this capacity, he also studied law and served as an Ohio State Senator. So as you can see what I'm saying here, this man was highly highly intelligent like super intelligent uh really really incredible stuff um around the time of his marriage to crete as she was known james began to dabble in politics as a republican he was a member of the ohio state senate in 1861 when the civil war erupted 29 year old james garfield soon joined the union army heroics and skirmishes in kentucky and tennessee such as the battles of Middle Creek and Shiloh, propelled him to the rank of Major General. In 1862, the Garfields' friends submitted his name for consideration for U.S. Representative for Ohio's 19th District. He won the election in November, but when the time came for the general to take his seat in late 1863, a critical period of the war, he had reservations about leaving his troops. Garfield was convinced to accept the will of the voters and join Congress by President Abraham Lincoln, who was in need of allies in Washington to uh, pass legislation. Garfield served over 17 years in the House of Representatives, where he voted in favor of the 13th Amendment to the Constitution, which abolished slavery, as well as the 14th and 15th Amendments, which pledged equal protection under the law and voting rights to citizens regardless of race. At the June 1880 Republican National Convention, Congressman Garfield delivered a speech in favor of naming Treasury Secretary John Sherman the party's nominee for president, hoping he would succeed the retiring Rutherford B. Hayes. Garfield had significant public speaking experience throughout his life as a professor, a preacher, and a politician. And the oration earned him accolades from convention delegates. Sherman did not receive enough support to win the nomination, nor did candidates Ulysses S. Grant or James G. Blaine. But after 35 indecisive ballots, a majority of delegates turned to the man who spoke in support of him. On the 36th ballot, Garfield was chosen as the GOP presidential nominee. In the November election, and I'll get into all that in a little bit here, uh, but pretty interesting stuff how he was in the uh, Civil War, uh, and then he was obviously elected to Congress, uh, and he served. And I'm going to get into a little bit here more about his Civil War uh, time. Uh, Garfield longed for adventure. He eventually found it, though perhaps not quite in the way he anticipated as a child, Uh, After being elected to the Ohio Senate in 1859, Garfield joined the Union Army at age 29 during the outbreak of the war against the Confederates in 1861. Garfield saw battle uh, combat in several skirmishes, including the Battle of Shiloh, as I said, and the Battle of Chickamauga. Uh, Before then, President Abraham Lincoln convinced him to resign his military post so he would devote his time to advocating for Ohio in the House of Representatives in 1863. Already had touched on that. He became a, gen- a major general. Uh, you know, like I said, he quickly rose through the ranks. He became a major general. Uh, and by 1863, he was chief of staff to General Rosecrans. Uh, general Rosecrans here on your screen. He was the chief of staff, James Garfield was, uh, to Rosecrans. Uh, after quickly rising to Major General uh, in the Union Army. Garfield was a staunch abolitionist. He really was. He, uh, he was totally against slavery. 
um, and he was all for rights and, and freeing slaves and that sort of thing. So, uh, pretty interesting stuff. Um, what else can I tell you here about Garfield and his kind of younger days and his rise? He was in Congress for 17 years. Uh, he left the military, like I said, in 1863, and he would continue to serve in Congress until 1880. So he was in Congress for 17 years, and he was actually part of the committee that gave the election to Hayes, to Rutherford B. Hayes, in 1876. In 1876, Garfield was a member of the 15-man investigation committee that awarded the presidential election to Rutherford B. Hayes over Samuel Tilden. Tilden had won the popular vote and was just one electoral vote shy of winning the presidency. The awarding of the presidency to Hayes was known as the Compromise of 1877. Anybody that watched my Hayes videos knows all this. It is believed that Hayes agreed to end Reconstruction in order to win. Opponents called this the corrupt bargain. Um, so interesting. He was actually on that committee, James Garfield was, that elect ended up uh, inevitably electing uh, Rutherford B. Hayes. Um, he was elected to, but he never served in the Senate. In 1880, James Garfield was elected to the U.S. US Senate for Ohio. However, he would never take office due to winning the presidency in November of that year, which obviously we're going to get into in our next video, uh, which will be all about his presidency, of course. So there you go. That's kind of like early life, birthplace, that sort of thing uh, of James Garfield. Um, you know, pretty interesting stuff, cool stuff there. Uh, part two, we're going to take a look, of course, at his presidency, which, of course, was very short-lived. He was only in office for uh, for a very short period of time, as we know, because he was the second president ever assassinated. So uh, we're going to get into all that, of course. So uh, there you go. A look at the birthplace, the early childhood, uh, early life, his Civil War days, and then of his days in Congress um, before he became president and was elected president. Uh, that's the early life look of James Garfield here in part one. Part two tomorrow, we're going to look, of course, at his presidency and then, of course, his assassination and his long drawn out death. Believe it or not, he didn't die until a few months after he was assassinated. And we're going to tell you all about that and get into that. And then, of course, we will take a look at the James Garfield Memorial, the tomb there in uh, Ohio. Uh, and we're going to show you where he's laid to rest. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for uh, watching part one. I hope you enjoyed it. Of course, thank you for the subscribes. Leave those comments and questions. Tell me what you think. Any, What do you guys think of James Garfield? Tell me below. Uh, and we will uh, see you tomorrow for part two. Thanks, guys.